Angels are saying to you, everything that you are dreaming and working towards are coming your way. Your heart's desire and discipline won't go unnoticed. Rewards from the universe are coming. Everything is changing for the better for you. Stay on your path and keep bettering yourself. Your upgrade is happening. Believe in the most positive outcome for your situation. Don't let it discourage you. It is all happening for your highest good. It is all coming together. Expect miracles. Enjoy where you currently are, knowing that this is not your final destination. Things will evolve, and you will grow too. It's easy to get caught up in the visions, forgetting to be truly present in this moment. Be grateful for your journey, for the ups, for the downs, and for all the moments that lead you to where you are right now. Be grateful because there is so much more greatness coming your way. Be yourself and believe in yourself, no matter how much others praise or try to bring you down. Don't let no one take your inner peace away from you. Have patience and believe in miracles. The biggest blessings often come unexpectedly. Be ready, feel grateful and welcome surprises and unexpected turns along the way. Let things flow. Nothing that happens is random. Look for patterns. Find deeper reasons why. Ask. Be curious. Everything is part of the divine plan. Grow your awareness. Experience synchronicities. May your feelings, words, and actions be in the alignment with what you want to see manifested in your life. Your inner state reflects your outer state. You reap what you sow. That's the law of nature. The universe is on your side. Your pure heart and kind intentions will not go unnoticed. The breakthrough is coming. Be grateful for this season of preparation. Be ready for what is coming. Everything you need is coming your way to support you on your personal dream journey in 2024. Don't be shy about what you truly want. Embrace it. Own it. It is yours. Be grateful for this chapter of your life. For all the experiences that shaped you into who you are today. No random things happened. Only synchronicities. Open your heart for the new chapter. Beautiful things are coming your way. The best things are yours in 2024. Embrace this chapter of abundance and blessings in all areas of your life. You are worthy and deserve the best life has to offer. 24 is your year to really start believing in yourself. You are leveling up and becoming more and more confident in your own shoes. This 2024 path is your path where you are going to rise. Dare to dream big and be big. You can choose to be grateful, positive, and empowered at any given moment. You can access the greatness within you and turn around any situation into a blessing. Love yourself. There are so many beautiful things in store for you in 2024. Be open and ready to receive unexpected blessings and miracles that are on the way to you. This is your year to focus on the things you can improve and change. Intentionally and gradually make these things better and enjoy the process. You'll see how magnificently small daily wins and positive results will compound into massive changes over time. There is going to be a day when you will look back and see why your journey has been the way it was. And you will feel peace and deep gratitude because you will understand that everything was meant to happen that way. There is magic in not knowing everything. You go on the adventure, you discover, you experience, you learn, you grow. Keep your heart open for life. Don't force and control it. Surrender and let it flow. Trust the process. Hold the vision for the most beautiful outcome and trust. There is no need for you to stress about it as long as your intention is clear and aligned with your heart. It is all coming together for you. 
Sometimes the universe rewards you more than you dreamed about to show you that you deserve more, you are meant for more, and you should be thinking even bigger. The portal to the greatest things in your life is your perspective. How you see things can open the doors to the most amazing moments and opportunities that are wildly beyond comprehension. The best part is that you are the gatekeeper. Your past served its purpose, but it is not you. Accept it and don't judge yourself. Be open to new opportunities in life and allow yourself to experience beyond what is familiar. Allow yourself to grow and blossom. Everything is unfolding for your highest good. Even when you feel down and stuck, know that there is a reason for everything and soon your situation will change for the better. Do you still believe that 2024 is your best year yet? This is your sign and reminder to stay aligned with your dreams and highest aspirations. 2024 is for miracles. Everything is going to be okay and unfold better than you have ever expected. There is no need to worry. Focus on the positive side. You can and you will manifest it. Believe in your power to create the world that you feel happy and excited to live in. It is not out of reach. It is a decision away. You deserve the best. Believe in your power to create the world that you feel happy and excited to live in. It is not out of reach. It is a decision away. You deserve the best. Be grateful for all chapters of your life, even those that are painful and hard to remember. There is a reason and a divine plan for everything that happens. Everything serves a purpose. Focus on the bigger picture and don't be too hard on yourself for your day to day, because not every day is meant to be better than the previous day. It is consistency over time that counts. It all adds up. What's coming is going to put a smile on your face. Blessings are just around the corner. You deserve wonderful surprises and the universe is going to deliver. You're blessed. And in God's perfect timing, he's going to open the eyes of your future spouse. And heaven will rejoice in another match made from the creator. Waiting is a gift wrapped in the Father's glory. He's doing so much beyond your confusion and pain. He's creating something remarkable as you wait. I know it's not always easy, but you're waiting for something heavenly. Just wait until you see what's on the other side of the wait, and if the silence has you upset, if the pain has caused confusion, if you're running into the unknown, know that your whole life is about to change. You're in transition. You're becoming. Hold the Father's hand through this process. Your footsteps will soon enter your promised land. It's coming in your darkest hour. It's coming with speed. It's coming with no more delay. It's coming even though you doubted. It's coming in the midst of your confusion and uncertainty. When God says it's time, nothing can stop it. It's coming. Child of God, you've lingered here for too long. It's time to pitch your tent and cross over Jordan and into the promised land. Your victory is beyond this painful place you've lingered. It's time to give it over to God and cross over. Your beautiful promised land awaits your arrival. Pitch your tents. Pitch your tents to the land of hope, destiny, and promise. You can no longer stay here. The times come to meet your promised land. I hear, enter. Stay ever so close to me, and you will not deviate from the path I have prepared for you. This is the most efficient way to stay on track. It is also the most enjoyable way. Men tend to multiply duties in their observance of religion. This practice enables them to give me money, time, and work without yielding up to me what I desire the most, their hearts. Rules can be observed mechanically. Once they become habitual, they can be followed with minimal effort and almost no thought. 
These habit-forming rules provide a false sense of security, lulling the soul into a comatose condition. What I search for in my children is an awakened soul that thrills to the joy of my presence. I created mankind to glorify me and enjoy me forever. I provide the joy. Your part is to glorify me by living close to me. The Word of God is our greatest defense against fear, worry, doubt, and uncertainty. The more you fill your mind with the Word of God, the less room there is for all the things listed above. Fill your mind with God's Word and speak His Word over every situation in your life that gives hope. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a GPS land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land He has given you, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Peace is our stabilizer in life. Life can be hectic for anyone, but especially for a Christian. We are Satan's main target for stress, oppression, and confusion. Yet, we may not know how we are going to come out of this situation, but peace lets us know it will come. Peace is a compass to direct us. We are to follow peace and grow in it. Peace first comes to us through our salvation. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God. It is our message to others. The gospel is called the message of peace. Our peace, our stability, becomes our message to others. The peace they are looking for, we have and can give them. Make no mistake about it, God will never be mocked. For what you plant will always be the very thing you harvest. The harvest you reap reveals the seed that was planted. If you plant the corrupt seeds of self-life into this natural realm, you can expect to experience a harvest of corruption. If you plant the good seeds of spirit life, you will reap the beautiful fruits that grow from the everlasting life of the Spirit. Lord Jesus, I come before you in faith, acknowledging the power and significance of your precious blood. I plead the covering of your blood over me and my loved ones, from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. By the power of your blood, I renounce every form of evil, sin, temptation, and affliction that seeks to harm us. I break off and tear down every stronghold and power of darkness. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit and protect us from all harm and danger. I thank you, Jesus, for shedding every drop of your precious blood to redeem us and set us free from the clutches of Satan. I trust in the power of your blood to shield us and keep us safe from all evil influences. May the blood of Jesus be a fortress around us, guarding us from all forms of spiritual attack. Cover us with your divine protection and grant us peace and security in your love embrace. In your mighty name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that in this second quarter of 2024, Whatever I lay my hands on will prosper. Money will never finish in my hands. If one door closes, ten more doors will open for me. Everything I do will prosper. Everything I am involved with will prosper. 
My steps are ordered to favor. My mind is filled with ideas that will transform the world. I have unusual results in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to know that I'm ordering your steps. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be frustrated and impatient. I just want you to trust me with all of your heart. It's going to work out. I already have you on the right path. I am the Lord your God, who holds your right hand. And I tell you, don't be afraid. I will help you. Whatever this week holds, remember God is bigger and stronger than anything you will face. Rely more on His strength than your own. If you're feeling overwhelmed, give it to God because His hands are big enough to hold your worries, doubts, and fears. Praying through the Bible is where God reveals Himself to us. Lev 26, 12. Praying through the Bible is where we begin to understand His heart for us. Rom 5, 8. 3. Praying through the Bible grows our faith in Jesus. Cole 1, 15 to 20. 4. Praying through the Bible positions and prepares our hearts to receive His mercy and His grace. 1 JN 1 9 Praying through the Bible helps us to understand His will by reinforcing truth and dismantling lies. Rom 12 2 6 Praying through the Bible builds courage in our hearts to trust Him with our lives as we read countless stories of His miraculous and faithful rescues of His children, is 43.2. 7. Praying through the Bible teaches us to desire the fruit that He grows for His glory and for our good, Gal 5.22.23. Read the Bible. Try to read it every single day. It corrects you, comforts you, and teaches you about God. Pray to God. Don't skip prayer. In a relationship, you need to communicate. Tell God your feelings, thoughts, worries. Involve God in every decision you make. Don't forget to thank God. Be grateful for the things you have. Talk to Jesus throughout your day. Repent of your sins constantly. If you are struggling with any sin, ask God to help you and set you free. Forgive others. Don't keep grudges or ill feelings towards them. Don't judge but correct others in love. Don't curse. No foul words or immoral jokes. Help the others, if it's in your power. Dress with modesty. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Though your motives are pure toward others, you will encounter those whose hearts aren't pure, and it hurts to find out someone has used you for their own purposes. When this happens, and it almost certainly will at one time or another, take comfort in God. You can be sure that even when others are untrue, God never wavers. He is always thinking of you, putting your best interest first. Lord, Open my eyes to the intents and motives of others when it concerns me. Give me a discerning heart to see when someone desires to hurt me or use me for their own purposes. Give me a love that can only come from you to forgive them. Give me a desire to truly see your good come from a difficult situation and comfort me so that I rise above the pain. You are God's masterpiece. He created you with precision and purpose, and you are loved. Don't let anyone or anything make you feel less than what God has created you to be, and do not compare yourself to others because you are unique. Scripture says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139.14 Embrace your uniqueness and be the light that you are. You are part of His plan. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. 
Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. Philippians 2, 14, 15. When the Holy Spirit reveals the truth about a situation or person, believe it. Some of our deepest hurts often stem from ignoring His warnings. Trust in the Holy Spirit's guidance. If we give up and turn our backs on all we've learned, all we've been given, all the truth we now know, we repudiate Christ's sacrifice and are left on our own to face the judgment and a mighty fierce judgment it will be. If the penalty for breaking the law of Moses is physical death, what do you think will happen if you turn on God's Son, spit on the sacrifice that made you whole, and insult this most gracious spirit? This is no light matter. God has warned us that he'll hold us to account and make us pay. He was quite explicit. Vengeance is mine, and I won't overlook a thing, and God will judge his people. Nobody's getting by with anything, believe me. From eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch anyone out of my hand. No one can undo what I have done. The Lord... He alone is God, and besides Him, there is none other. He calls those things that do not exist as though they did, Romans 4.17. Before you start trying to fix it, seek God's face first. He knows everything about everything. Pour out your heart to Him, seek wisdom, and have faith that He will deliver you. Remind Him of His promises to you. If he says it, it's already done. You'll need to activate your faith to make it a reality. Guess what? Once it's done, no one can reverse it. The devil cannot snatch you out of the hands of God. Stop giving the devil authority over you. You are God's special possession, and as such you are safe in the arms of Jesus. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you, Romans 8, 11, John 14, 23. The Holy Spirit is actually a person. Just because you don't see Him doesn't mean He doesn't exist. You need to understand that you're just not ordinary. The Holy Spirit, the most powerful being, dwells in you. He is right there with you at this moment. Before Jesus left the earth, he promised to send us a helper, a.k.a. the Holy Spirit, to teach us all things and remind us of all he has taught. John 14, 15, 18, 26. Not sure about you, but when I'm at a standstill or in need of direction, it's always reassuring to know that I can reach out to the Holy Spirit for answers and directions. He is called omniscient for a reason. The month year is coming to an end soon. Thank God for His grace and mercy. Don't start the new month year clueless. It's a good time to ask the Holy Spirit for guidance as it relates to the new month year. He knows the end from the Isaiah 46.10. So why not reach out to Him? They will fight against you but will not overcome you, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. It may seem like your life, body, finances, family, marriage, children, career, academics, etc. may be under attack by the devil, but be rest assured that the devil will not subdue you. Rather, you will subdue the devil. The word of God to you, the enemy, will fight against you, but will not prevail because God Almighty is with you and will rescue you. God has promised to be with you for all eternity. Matthew 28, 20. Know that you are fighting from a place of victory and God won't leave you hanging. God keeps his word. So be rest assured that the arrows the enemy has thrown your way will not prevail because God has said so. God's word is final. Give God the glory and thanks 
begin to praise him even before the battle is over. Victory is assured. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me, and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. The Bible tells us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, Ephesians 6.10. Essentially, long-lasting strength can only be found in God. Not only does God make you strong, but His presence brings protection. The psalmist knows this and declares, The Lord is my strength and shield. When your trust is in God, you're just assured that God will always come through for you no matter how dire the circumstance may seem. E.g. Daniel in the lion's den, Daniel 6, the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace, Daniel 3, etc., and even your own testimony. When you know this, you just can't help but be joyful and be grateful to God. I don't know what you may be going through. Why don't you take a minute to reflect on the goodness of God in your life? Then begin to thank Him for all that He's done for you and all that He'll do for you. This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom, or the powerful boast in their power, or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth, and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. The Lord is telling us not to boast in our wisdom, power, or riches, but to boast in the fact that we know Him. To know God is to know love. Boast in the fact that you have God, the creator of this universe, as your own Father. When you're faced with challenges, it helps to have this mindset. If you know that God is your Father, then you know that because of His unfailing love, you really can't fail because He brings justice and righteousness to your life. Question for you. Do you know God? I understand we won't know God fully, but He continues to reveal aspects of His nature to us so I implore you to get to know him today. A good place to start is by reading his wonderful words, the Bible. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand him better. God, I am honored to be your servant. Thank you for being a good king, loving your people and wanting what's best for them. I want to share your love with the world. Use me to spread the gospel and bring people to you and please give me the courage and endurance to do so. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus, I am in awe of your faithfulness and love. Thank you for loving us so much that you chose to sacrifice yourself on the cross. Each day, I encounter people who need to experience your love. Guide me as I live a life that shows others what a relationship with you looks like Help me lead others to you. Amen. I want you to have quiet confidence in me, your living God. As the prophet Isaiah wrote, in quietness and confidence is your strength. Sometimes people use loud voices or preposterous promises to gain power over others. These noisy speakers may appear to be strong offering health and wealth to people who give them money, but they are actually just parasites. True strength comes from quietly trusting in me and my promises. Rejoice that I am a living God, not a lifeless idol. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever. My power is infinite, yet I approach you gently and lovingly. Spend time with me, cherished one relating to me in confident trust. As you relax with me, I strengthen you, preparing you for challenges you will encounter on the road ahead. While you are focusing on my presence, use scripture to help you pray. You can draw near me by whispering, I love you, O Lord, my strength. Jesus is loving you, Revelation 1.5b. 
Jesus is praying for you. Romans 8.34, Hebrews 7.25 Jesus is representing you on your behalf. Hebrews 9.24 Jesus is sanctifying you and making you holy. Philippians 1.6 1, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 Jesus is sympathizing with your weakness. Hebrews 4.15 Jesus is providing a way of escape, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Jesus is advocating and pleading your case before the Father, 1 John 2, 1, 2. Jesus is ruling and reigning in complete sovereign power over your temptation, Luke 22, 69, Hebrews 8, 1, 2. Jesus is upholding you and the entire universe by his word, Hebrews 1, 3. Jesus is preparing a place for you to take you to, so that you can be with him forever. John 14, 1, 3, worse Thessalonians 4, 17. Jesus is sustaining you that you may remain faithful to the end. 1 Corinthians 1, 8. Next time the dreary clouds of temptation come over your room, set your mind on what Jesus is doing to you and for you in that very moment. Set your mind upon the things of Christ, Romans 8, 5, 6, Colossians 3, 2. And may your joy in Jesus become too fulfilling, too gratifying, too satisfying to forfeit to the sad counterfeit pleasure of sin. Ask the Holy Spirit to keep working in you and to strengthen you in all goodness. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path to everlasting life. Psalms 139, 23, 34. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you in every part of your life. Galatians 5:25. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you see the precious worth in every person you meet and pray to treat them with kindness. Ask to be more prudent and to hold your tongue. Proverbs 10:19. Ask the Holy Spirit to remind you of the true word of God during times of trial and tribulations. Ask God to show you the way to love people the way he does. Ask God to show you who you need to forgive and offer that forgiveness. I reminded the gathering that Jesus' resurrection was more than a dead man coming back to life. Resurrection made a way for new life right now. It means nothing is too far gone. Nothing is past the point of decay. Nothing is too dead for resurrection. Not a relationship, addiction, circumstance, sorrow, mistake, corrupt system, societal evil human soul. If Jesus came out of the grave after three days dead, then not even death has the final word over his resurrected life. This isn't just a far-off promise for heaven. It is the possibility of redemption and renewal right now. Jesus brought a whole new kingdom with him. He conquered death and sin and shame. He came to this earth and brought with him good news that lives and breathes here too, in our homes, our earth, our communities, around our tables. Humans are not great at experiencing the freedom and life Jesus paid for. Thus, we are not great at sharing it. We think we have to earn our grace, which means we want others to earn theirs too. We've been told our holiness is primarily a function of getting these certain things right and behavioral modification. You may hear a disproportionate teaching on human depravity with the subsequent debtor's shame long after Jesus declared us brothers and sisters. Jesus came to set us free. And according to Paul, the main motivation was actually, for freedom's sake, Jesus made us free because he wanted us to be free, not to hold it over our heads or force us into. Deering from God doesn't need to take a long time, but neither can it be rushed. You don't have to pray and cry out to God for two hours a day every single day of the week to hear his voice. Reading your Bible doesn't mean it has to be four chapters a day. 
we make this more complicated than it has to be. What you do need is a time that is set aside, a time for nothing but you and God, and you need to guard that time. Pick a place that works for you where you can really get alone with God and detach from the usual distractions. Come prepared to hear from Him, having things like your Bibli, a pen, a highlighter, and a journal readily available. Have worship music within reach, too. Keep your time with God fresh and new, but also simple and sustainable. Find out what works for you and create space for God. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits, since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. We are called to be the good soldiers of Jesus. So we too must take part in the suffering going on in this world. We must be going out and sitting with the broken people in this world. But since no soldier gets caught up in random nonsense, we too must remain focused on our missions. And while we are sitting with the broken, remember that we too are broken, but we have a hope that sets us apart. So we must remain apart. Remain a good soldier of Christ Jesus with our minds set on pleasing only Him. When Christ came to this earth, fulfilled the law, died for us, and resurrected, He eliminated all of those requirements and left us with one instruction. Believe. It is through our faith we are justified. Is it really that simple? Yes. That is how good God is. His only requirement is that we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and everything He did for us, and we receive salvation, we receive our freedom from sin. We have access to the grace of God because of Jesus Christ. The Lord God Almighty is our King. We should forever praise His name. When we stop to consider all God has done and all God will do, we should be filled with wonder and awe. The Bible tells us story after story about God's strength and power. He defeated our enemies and Satan. He is all-powerful. When we are tempted to rely on our own strength, we must resist. When we question God's ability, we must remember His greatness. Begin and end your days by exalting His holy name. Psalm 42.5 says, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. David was honest before God. He did not hide his feelings and real emotions. But in the end, he fought for his heart. David talked to himself and reminded himself to put his hope back in God and worship Him. We too need to remind ourselves that God is bigger than what we are facing, a present help in time of need and working all things together for our good. Fight for the atmosphere of your heart and guard it with all diligence because all issues, including mental and emotional health, flow from it. If Christ had not covert use with His grace, each of us would be overdrawn on our heavenly bank account. When it comes to goodness, we would have insufficient funds, inadequate holiness. God requires a certain balance of virtue in our account, and it's more than any of us has alone. Our holiness account shows insufficient funds, and only the holy will see the Lord. What can we do? We could try making a few deposits. Maybe if I wave at my neighbor or compliment my husband or go to church next Sunday, I'll get caught up. But how do you know when you've made enough? If you are trying to justify your own statement, forget ever having peace. You are trying to justify an account you can't justify. Rom 8.33 It is God who justifies. I have to confess. I don't always react well to certain situations. I speak before I think things all the way through, and I often say things I don't mean, wishing I could take them back. 
Unfortunately, I often do this with my children. When one of them disobeys, I'm likely to say some thing like, Okay, fine. You don't want to share with your sister? I'll just take away all of your toys. I know I'm not going to do that, and so do they. It's an empty threat. When we admit our powerlessness, we see that our powerlessness doesn't apply just to our hurts, hang-ups, and habits, but to pretty much every area of our lives, even our tongues. We like to think we are in control of our words, but let something surprise us, and the truth soon comes out. That doesn't mean that we should say anything we want and then just say, Hey, don't get mad at me, I'm powerless. Instead, we should ask God to help us with our words, just as we surrender other areas of our lives to Him. We can ask Him, like the psalmist did, to guard our mouths, helping us not to make promises we can't keep or say things that are untrue or hurtful. If God is truly in charge of our lives, he should certainly be in charge of what we say as much as what we do. Oh, my child, have I ever failed you? Have I ever turned my back on you or forsaken you? Have I not been your refuge and your strong defense? I have protected you and kept you in sickness and in health. Yes, I am with you to help you now. Fear not. My purposes will be fulfilled in spite of your weaknesses if in your need you rely on my strength, my will shall be done regardless of the flaws in your life, if you count on the power of my righteousness. I do not work only in cases where there are no obstacles, but I glory in overruling the prevailing circumstances, and I take pleasure in bringing victories in those places where no victory is anywhere in sight. Count on my coming. Know that whenever faith brings me on the scene, everything is changed. Darkness is turned to light. Grief is turned to joy. Sickness to health. Poverty to my sufficient supply. Doubt to faith. Anxiety to trust. No negative force can occupy the same place as my spirit. When my spirit comes in, all these things must go. Yes, they shall go. Ask for the victory. I will come and bring it. Don't look for the victory, look for me, and you will see the victory that I will bring with me. After I have co, you shall behold the miracles I will do. Sometimes God puts us through the experience and discipline of darkness to teach us to hear and obey Him. Songbirds are taught to sing in the dark, and God puts us into the shadow of his hand, until we learn to hear him. Isaiah 49, 2. Whatever I tell you in the dark, pay attention when God puts you into darkness, and keep your mouth closed while you are there. Are you in the dark right now in your circumstances or in your life with God? If so, then remain quiet. If you open your mouth in the dark, you will speak while in the wrong mood. Darkness is the time to listen. Don't talk to other people about it. Don't read books to find out the reason for the darkness. Just listen and obey. If you talk to other people, you cannot hear what God is saying. When you are in the dark, listen, and God will give you a very precious message for someone else once you are back in the light. After every time of darkness, we should experience a mixture of delight and humiliation. If there is only delight, I question whether we have really heard God at all. We should experience delight for having heard God speak, but mostly humiliation for having taken so long to hear Him. Then we will exclaim, How slow I have been to listen and understand what God has been telling me. And yet God has been saying it for days and even weeks. But once you hear Him, he gives you the gift of humiliation, which brings a softness of heart, a gift that will always cause you to listen to God now. Whatever you do, keep moving forward. Keep trusting that you will get there if you just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Keep moving forward because you're worth it, my beautiful friend. 
It might take longer than you thought it would. It might be harder than you expected. But don't let those things keep stopping you. Keep going anyways. Keep trying anyways. Keep showing up. One step at a time is not too difficult. Don't underestimate the power of a small, consistent progress. Sweetheart, you don't need to worry. God's got this. All that concerns your precious soul matters wholeheartedly to Him. For you are so deeply embedded in His love. He promises to never leave or forsake you. And your future shines so wonderfully with His glory and splendor. Enwrapped in unfailing love, now and forever. Be anxious for nothing, dear one, but in everything by prayer and supplication. For those precious tears and innermost prayers will never go in vain. He is listening so intently to you. He holds you close, whispering tender words of love, that he shall always be with you until the end. Be still, beautiful soul. For he will do the impossible if you're not quite yourself lately. Don't worry if you can't pay for your flight at the moment, which you will in time. Don't worry if the phone and electric bills are running. Don't worry if you're not living in your own house. Don't worry if your friends are out there visiting every best place in the city in times like this, when you can feel the hope so terribly thin and so terribly pale like your lips when you choose to not put on red lipstick in the morning. Don't worry if your depression keeps repeating the details of your rehabilitation when you didn't bring up your self-discovery to people who stared at you as if you were a guitar out of tune. Don't worry about the things you left behind which you have tremendously outgrown. Don't worry if the love of your life doesn't look at you the same way anymore like the first time. Don't worry if your eyes are puffy and you look bewildered. Don't worry if they take the house key from your hand. Don't worry if you can't always make out what your heart was saying. Don't worry about the hair you grew so long just to think of cutting it off again. Don't worry about not worrying. Don't worry if you can't put the evening to sleep in your bed. Just remember the bedside of your mother's love. Your father watches every time the world gets so heavy to bear. Just remember that the ants are out there for some chow. Some bees have gotten out of their home to pay the flowers a visit. Say hello to the journal of the sun and keep it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Subscribe our YouTube channel to reach 40,000 divine subscribers before April. Please share this video to your good wishers and share super thanks. Type Amen to affirm. Thanks for watching. God is saying your path is cleared now. All blocks are removed. It is only upwards from here for you. You're going to experience an unstoppable acceleration. This is your time to start receiving. Everything is happening in divine order. I trust that everything I am after is on its way to me as I speak. I trust that all my experiences needed to happen to propel me to this point of gratitude and wisdom. I truly believe that I am on the right path and will end up where I am meant to be. Source has a plan for you, far greater than you can possibly imagine. By living in alignment with your higher self, you are manifesting this higher timeline at a faster speed. When you do the inner work, break bad habits and build new paradigms, you are able to jump timelines. All of the work you are doing to become a better version of yourself is seen and felt by Source. You will be rewarded tenfold for this inner work. The entire force of the universe all of your ancestors and your guides are here to help you become a better version of yourself. You are surrounded by unseen forces that are here to guide you along the path. You are not alone. Miracles are in the works. Soon you will come face to face with these miracles and all of the challenges you've faced will make perfect sense. There was a higher plan all along. Give thanks for this divine support. Things will turn out better than you expect. 
Remember the times you felt defeated and you still make it through? This time is no exception. Better days and more incredible experiences await you. Your life is only going to get better and better. You are perfect exactly as you are. There is no need to change anything except the thoughts that you are not good enough. I have the power to overcome anything with ease. I am never alone, for the source is always behind me along my journey. I have the power to rewrite my story the way I desire it to manifest. I am the hero of my own story living with a purpose. I am here to serve with love. Don't ever dim your light to match the darkness that surrounds you. Distance yourself from those who feel you are too much. Don't suppress the magic you have bubbling beneath the surface to please those who undervalue you. The right souls who appreciate your energy will enter your life and make you forget about those who took you for granted. Until then, glow as brightly as you can. Blind those who made you feel less than special with your light. You deserve all the love you, so willingly, give to others. Most people aren't worth your time, but you're a lover, a believer, someone who naturally cares. It's in your blood, in your soul, looking for a way out, for a way to touch other people's lives, to try to save them. No matter how they treat you, you care too much, love too much, feel too much. And that's okay, baby. But that's how you end up getting hurt. That's how you end up disappointed. One day, it'll all make sense. One day, you'll understand why you are the way you are. I'm an empath and a highly sensitive person. And I hate conflict and dramatic people especially aggressive, rude, and insensitive people. Other people can decide whenever they want conflict or how they want to act and behave. But I get to protect my own space and say goodbye to people like that or those who try to create conflict. Everyone has a right to feel how they feel, but they don't have the right to disrespect me, purposely hurt me, or overstep my boundaries. I get control of my space, not them. I'm at a place where protecting my peace is a priority. I keep my distance from anyone who is not good for me. This includes those who are rude, insensitive, cruel, mean, disrespectful, controlling, manipulative, critical, abusive, and those who don't stay in their own lane. Calm and kindness is what I keep in my heart. There's still a part of you that anticipates your progress stalling. A part of you that questions how good it can get. A part of you that thinks something bad has to balance out all the good. But here's the thing. Your life was structured in such a way that a lot of the difficulty, the struggle, the negativity came first. And now, you get to swim through an ocean of all your birthrights. All that is good, all that is unfamiliar because it is seamlessly aligned in growth and positivity. It won't be perfect. You wouldn't want it that way anyway. But when your mind asks when all of this will go downhill, let it know that we've been there and done that. It's a new time. You deserve this elevated consistency. Every morning I have to remind myself that I don't need to prove myself to anyone. Not a single soul. I don't need to justify, defend, over-explain, or convince anyone about any aspect of my life or my choices. I'm doing my best. I'm healing. Hurting, growing, grieving, loving, learning, and most of all, I'm trying. Anyone who wants to judge where I'm at, compete, or criticize has no place in any part of my life. I've spent a lifetime trying to get people to accept me or feel proud of me. But now all that matters is that I'm proud of myself. Doors you didn't even know existed are opening up to you. Things are clicking more seamlessly. Life is meeting you in your space of alignment. 
You used to think the entirety of your results were based on sweat and hard work, but now you recognize that it's about the energy you're walking into the room with. You can feel how much of a game changer this is. Each next step is unfolding at the divine hour for you. Stay on this path. It's where all of your prayers get answered. Just keep finding what feels good. Don't overcomplicate things right now. You should be anticipating good news, good health, and good results. Your efforts taste so much better when they come from a space of clarity and bliss. That is your only responsibility right now. I see you. Beautiful, brave, courageous you. Don't you see how incredible you are? Don't you know how divinely supported you are? You have an entire army of angelic energy by your side cheering you on. They are holding you lovingly, telling you everything is going to be okay. And they are whispering love notes to you, reminding you of your strength and ability to persevere. Don't give up now. You are so, so close to receiving everything that you have always wanted. Dear God, I've been letting the wrong people have access to me for way too long. I recognize that as your child, I should stay away from all wickedness and evil. Please show me those who shouldn't be allowed in my life. I always catch myself trying to help and water everyone around me, even if it hurts me in the process. But my garden needs water too. I need help too. I humbly refuse to tolerate anything less than what you show me that I deserve. I am human, and I have feelings too. So today I ask that you please limit who and what I give access to. Protect me from all hidden agendas and people or things that are sent to hurt and use me. Dear God, I want to be an expert in the way I react to things. Whether it's things that make me happy or things that bother me, I am no longer letting people or things have control over my emotions and reactions. When things make me upset or make me feel some type of way, please make your presence known. Go off like an alarm in my heart and remind me to speak to you and think. Guide my behavior and put me in check when it is needed. Show me how to carry myself with grace and poise, and when and if I get out of character, remind me to reevaluate myself. Dear God, sometimes I feel like I am my biggest critic. I strongly judge everything that I do, and 910 the things that I have to say aren't good. I want to break that very bad habit. I want to learn how to give myself the grace that you give me. Forgive me for all the times I let negative thoughts about myself consume me. Forgive me for all the times I believed I wasn't enough. In your eyes, I will always be enough. Show me how to only say beautiful things to myself. Teach me how to shower myself with love and kindness. I want to treat myself the way that you treat me. Thank you, Lord. Dear God, my inner child tends to cling and latch onto people and things that serve me no purpose. Ever since I have been getting closer to you, you have been granting me so much clarity on things that I need to work on in my life, and I thank you for that. Today I claim detachment on anything that has been setting me back. I pray that you make me aware of what deserves my time and energy. I ask that you heal my inner child so that I no longer look for worldly things to cling on to to bring me comfort. Attach me to your love, your kingdom, and your word. Create silent and graceful exits from unhealthy attachments that I have. Let it be you that I cling on to. Your love is never failing. Dear God, I'm not sure what's going on in my life right now. Things are inconsistent and chaotic, but I trust that you are going to help me figure it out. Although I am going through a lot of ups and downs, the low moments never make me overlook or forget all the great and amazing things that you have done for me. 
Just like with everything else in my life, I know that you will come through and help me figure it out. I humbly ask that you grant me clarity to see and know exactly what it is that I need to do to get back on track. I am sure that these minor setbacks will result in a major comeback with you by my side. I thank you in advance. Dear God, I humbly come before you today to ask that you please help me make room in my life for what's about to come. Get rid of anything that is just occupying space in my life. Please start preparing me now, both mentally and physically, for this sweep. Help me detach myself from whatever is pushing me in the wrong direction. I can feel the shift coming in my life. I'm not sure what's going to happen next, but you do, and that's more than enough for me. I trust you completely, and I have faith that all of this will make sense soon. I thank you in advance. Dear God, these days I feel that I need to work on self-awareness and improving my judgment. I come to you in prayer to kindly ask that you sharpen my skills. Please be generous and grant me awareness and discernment. Allow me to be able to distinguish what's sent from you and what's not. Help me be aware of my surroundings at all times, and only allow me to partake in things that are nurturing for my soul. I thank you for having my back thus far, despite my poor judgment. It's time I get equipped and polished properly to handle what's going on around me and what's to come. I thank you in advance for your generosity. Dear God, protect me from the spirit of lust, destroy and bind up any lustful desire in my body. I refuse to let temptation win and satisfy the enemy. Do not let me lose focus of what's important. Permit me to prioritize you first in my life. Touch my heart, clear my mind, and cleanse my spirit. I rebuke any spirit that is trying to demolish me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and surround me with your presence. Prohibit me from craving anything but your love. Show me that you are my one and only true love. My heart is ready to receive blessings from you. Heavenly Father, thank you. I thank you for allowing me to see beyond the human eye and revealing the spiritual generational curses that have been passed down to me. I pray that you equip me with the armor I require to break these curses. Allow me to make a change for my bloodline. No witchcraft, demons, or evil spirits can touch me, for I am your child. I choose you, Lord. I rebuke any spirit of poverty, anxiety, and depression. In the name of Jesus, I am covered by the blood of Jesus. I declare and seek a change. I will worship you until you come back for me and after that. God, in you I have all I need. But when trials come, sometimes I forget that you are in control. I need you to make me strong and courageous. Please give me the courage I need to trust in you. Remind me that you are with me and that you will continue to instruct and guide me. Show me that you are near. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus, please grant me the courage to trust in your way of life, especially when it looks too weak or too vulnerable. Through your Spirit, remind me each day that my goal is to live according to your way and that your unbreakable love makes me safe. As you guide me this week, please encourage me with the memory of your completed resurrection and the living hope of my future resurrection. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37, 4 Delight yourself in the Lord. The psalmist exhorts us to delight yourself in the Lord. This invitation extends far beyond mere duty or obligation. It calls us to find our deepest satisfaction and joy in the Almighty in His very person, His perfect attributes, and His wondrous works. Whether it is contemplating the eternal triune nature of God, 
marveling at his boundless power and love, or rejoicing in the stunning tapestry of creation, we are called to revel in the Lord. The psalmist also assures us that as we delight in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. This is not a promise of material wealth or worldly success, but rather the fulfillment of our spiritual longings. When our hearts are aligned with God's will, He grants us the deepest desires of our soul, communion with Him, growth in grace, and the ultimate joy of eternal life. Let us then heed the psalmist's exhortation and make the Lord the wellspring of our delight. In doing so, may we experience the abundant blessings that flow from a heart surrendered to the Almighty. May our souls be ever satisfied in Him, and may our lives be a testament to the joy found in delighting in the Lord. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Colossians 3.20 ESV Embracing Obedience and Reverence for Parents In a world that often encourages rebellion and independence, this verse serves as a gentle reminder of the importance of honoring our parents. It is a call to humility, respect, and obedience, knowing that such actions not only please our earthly parents, but also our Heavenly Father. This verse holds a profound message for all of us, regardless of our age or stage in life. It reminds us of the importance of honoring and obeying our parents, not just out of obligation, but because it brings joy to our Heavenly Father. Our parents play a significant role in shaping our character, teaching us valuable life lessons, and teaching us how to fight challenges. Therefore, it is crucial that we listen to their wisdom and respect their authority. Obeying our parents is not always easy, especially when we have different beliefs, opinions, or desires. However, when we choose to submit to their guidance, we demonstrate humility, trust, and willingness to learn from those who have walked the path before us. It is through this obedience that we cultivate a strong foundation of respect and gratitude both towards our parents and towards God. Moreover, when we obey our parents, we please the Lord. Our obedience is not solely for the benefit of our parents, but also for our spiritual growth and development. By following the instructions given to us by our parents, we align ourselves with God's plan for our lives, allowing His blessings to flow freely. So, let us strive to be obedient children, recognizing our lives. May we honor them by listening attentively, valuing their guidance, and obeying their instructions. In doing so, we not only strengthen our relationships with our parents, but also deepen our relationship with God and we bring joy to the Lord and set ourselves on a path of spiritual growth and blessings. Children are called to obey their parents, not only out of duty, but also out of reverence for God. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work, for His good pleasure. Philippians 2.13 ESV, The Power of God at Work in Use this verse reminds us to acknowledge God's sovereign work in our lives. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that our spiritual growth and transformation depend on our own efforts. Paul declares that it is God that works within us. God is actively involved in shaping us into the image of Christ. God not only works within us, but also empowers us to have the desire to do His will. Our inclination towards righteousness and our yearning to please God are not self-generated, but are gifts from Him. The power to will and to work comes from God Himself. It is God's gracious and sovereign pleasure to work in believers both the desire and the ability to obey His will. This is a comforting truth, assuring us that God will never require of us anything, 
he has not provided the power to accomplish. God not only gives us the desire, but also equips us with the ability to carry out his purposes. He empowers us to work for his good pleasure. This means that the tasks set before us, no matter how daunting they may seem, are not meant to be accomplished in our own strength. We can rely on God's power and guidance every step of the way. It is through his strength that we can live out our faith and make a meaningful impact on the world around us. May we continually seek his guidance and yield to his work. Let us allow God to shape us into vessels that bring glory to his name. Let's surrender and rely on his power so that we will experience the joy and fulfillment that come from living in alignment with his will. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Isaiah 5.20 ESV Stop Calling Evil, Good and Good Evil how many times have we witnessed events where what is clearly wrong is defended and justified as good? It is disheartening to witness the twisted logic that seeks to redefine what is virtuous and praiseworthy. When we label evil as good, we dangerously deceive ourselves and ignore the impact our actions have on others. We set ourselves up for moral corruption that will eventually lead to our downfall. In a world where cultural norms and societal pressures hold strong sway over us, it is extremely important that we understand the significance of practicing obedience to God's will over mindlessly conforming to traditions. Our culture can sometimes lead us down the wrong path by endorsing values and beliefs that go against the teachings of God. In a world where moral relativism seems to prevail, we must be bold in holding on to our convictions. We should not be afraid to defend what is right, even if it means standing alone. So, I urge you to reflect upon the wisdom found in Isaiah 5.20. Let us strive to be vigilant, never allowing ourselves to be deceived by the distortion of truth. May we be courageous enough to reject the prevailing mindset that seeks to redefine good and evil. Let us choose to listen to the truth rather than lies. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalm 23.3 ESV God fills our soul with new joy. In this fast-paced and chaotic world, Finding moments of solace and direction can be challenging. Life often presents us with unexpected trials and tribulations that can leave us feeling weary and lost. We sometimes feel exhausted, wearied, troubled, anxious, and worn down with care and toil. Psalm 23.3 reminds us that there is solace to be found. As it says, He restores my soul. Even in our most challenging moments, we can find comfort and renewal through our faith in Jesus Christ. God brings back our soul's vigor. He fills our souls with new joy. So now we are reminded that our souls are not meant to be burdened forever, but rather lifted up and restored through God's power. He also leads us in paths of righteousness. He conducts us in the straight path that leads to himself. He does not permit us to wander in ways that would lead to ruin. He leads us in the path by which we become righteous. It is not primarily on our account. It is not solely that we may be saved. It is that he may be honored. As his word says, for his name's sake. So he urges us to follow the directions of his word the teachings of his spirit, and the guidance of his providence. No one who submits to him in this way will ever go astray. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Psalms 147.3 ESV
dealing with a broken heart can be one of the most challenging experiences in life. It's during these times that we may feel lost, overwhelmed, and in need of healing. Are you dealing with a broken heart right now? Perhaps you have experienced the loss of a loved one, the end of a cherished relationship, or rejection from anything. The pain can feel unbearable, leaving you feeling lost, confused, and in need of healing. In this time, the words of Psalm 147.3 assures us of God's unfailing love and His desire to mend our brokenness. Know that you are not alone in your suffering. God sees your pain, and He longs to bring healing to your broken heart. Allow yourself to find solace in His presence, seeking comfort and peace through prayer and meditation. Pour out your emotions before Him, knowing that He hears your cries and offers restoration. Always remember that healing awaits those who find refuge in God. Trust in His ability to mend your brokenness and know that your sorrow will not last forever. With time and through His grace, you will be healed. May Psalm 147.3 be a constant reminder of His tender love and care for you. He wants you to seek Him this time and depend on Him for comfort and healing. The ear that listens to life-giving reproof will dwell among the wise. Proverbs 15.31 ESV How do we react when we hear correction or life-giving reproof? And admit it or not, sometimes we consider it criticism. When we hear it, we tend to feel defensive or hurt. So now, I would like to share Proverbs 15.31 to teach and refresh us. As it says, The ear that listens to life-giving reproof will dwell among the wise. It clearly teaches us to listen to reproof as it will help us to be wise. We should learn to embrace and welcome constructive criticism and correction in our life. They help us grow and develop as a person. Just as plants need nourishment to flourish, we too need correction to thrive. We have to accept that we don't know everything and that there is always room for improvement. It takes humility to acknowledge our weaknesses and actively seek guidance from others who are wiser or more experienced in certain areas. Their wisdom will help us make more informed decisions and navigate life's challenges with greater wisdom and discernment. We have to appreciate those who care enough about our growth. They're the ones who care. We have to know that correction is not meant to tear us down, but to build us. Instead of defensive or dismissive reactions, we have to respond to corrections with humility and gratitude. And by continuing in doing it, we will dwell among the wise. But when we are judged by the Lord, we disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. Corinthians 11.32 ESV We are disciplined so that we may not be condemned. Have you ever experienced pain as if you are rejected by the Lord? Moments when you feel distant from Him, burdened by troubles, or overwhelmed by circumstances. While such experiences may cause us distress and confusion, it is important to remember that our Heavenly Father's love comes packaged with His discipline. Based on 1 Corinthians 11.32, experiencing pain and rejection is often a gentle reminder of our need for correction. We all make mistakes, and sometimes we may stray from God's ways. So God has to discipline us for us to be right again with Him and not be condemned along with the world. This demonstrates God's redemptive love. Our Heavenly Father disciplines us to prevent us from being lost in eternal condemnation. Amidst the pain, we find hope in knowing that God's discipline is a sign of His deep love for us. We have to know that God's discipline serves a significant purpose. 
It isn't to condemn or punish us, but to redirect our path back to Him. It is a form of training and guidance, shaping us to be more Christ-like. When we experience pain or rejection, it is an invitation to self-reflect, evaluate our choices, and seek repentance. It is a call to realign ourselves with God's will. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Romans 8.14 ESV In this verse, the Apostle Paul is highlighting the significance of being led by the Spirit of God. He implies that true children of God, or genuine followers of Jesus, are those guided and directed by the Holy Spirit. Through faith in Jesus Christ, believers are not only forgiven of their sins, but also adopted as sons and daughters of God. This intimate relationship with God carries the privileges and responsibilities of being His children. When Paul speaks of being led by the Spirit of God, he highlights the transformative work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers. The Holy Spirit not only dwells within us, but also impresses His nature and character upon us. The Holy Spirit guides and shapes our actions, thoughts, and desires. Being led by the Holy Spirit reflects the fact that we belong to God's family. The Holy Spirit empowers us to live victoriously over sin, resist temptation, and grow in holiness. As we surrender to the leading of the Holy Spirit, we experience a deeper level of spiritual intimacy with God and live a life that reflects His values and purposes. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. James 1.14 be careful of your desires. The key concept in this verse is the idea of desire. According to James, when a person is tempted to sin, it is because they have a desire or craving for something that draws them towards that sin. This desire can take many forms. It may be a desire for material possessions, a desire for power or control, or a desire for pleasure or satisfaction. We need to be careful because our desires play a significant role in influencing our thought processes. When we allow our desires to take control, we can become focused on satisfying immediate pleasure and neglect the long-term consequences of our actions. We also need to note that having desires or temptations is not necessarily sinful in and of itself. The issue arises when those desires lead us towards sinful thoughts or actions. This is why it is important for believers to be vigilant in guarding their hearts and minds against temptation, relying on the Holy Spirit and the guidance of God's Word to resist the pull of sinful desire. The idea behind James's warning in this verse is that we need to exercise care and discernment when we encounter temptation. Temptation can be alluring and attractive, but we need deceptive nature and be on guard against its destructive consequences. It is only by relying on the Holy Spirit and the wisdom of God's Word to resist the pull of sinful desire. Finally then, Brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. Thessalonians 4.1 ESV Do so more and more. This verse is part of a larger section of verse Thessalonians. The Apostle Paul is addressing the believers in Thessalonica. Paul gives Thessalonians specific instructions on how to live out their faith in a way that is pleasing to God. Paul urges them to continue to pursue a life that pleases God, saying, We ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus, that as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. 
The phrase more and more suggests that the Christian life is a journey of continual growth and spiritual development, characterized by increasing hunger and thirst for God with increasing dedication and fervor. We are called to grow and mature in our faith throughout our lives. This growth is not just an intellectual exercise, but is characterized by an increasing hunger and thirst for God. It's akin to the idea of pursuing excellence in all areas of our lives, not just settling for mediocrity or complacency. This means that we should be constantly seeking Him, spending time in prayer and meditation, studying His Word, and seeking His guidance on all aspects of our lives. As we do so, we will become more aware of His presence in our lives and more attuned to His will for us. A man's steps are from the Lord. How then can man understand his way? Proverbs 20:24 20, ESV Our future is not in our hands. We, as human beings, tend to rely on our own plans and goals to direct our lives, but we cannot fully understand the path that God is leading us down. We should seek to align our own goals and plans with God's will. We must be willing to surrender our own desires and trust in Him, even when the path ahead is unclear. We can seek His guidance through prayer, reading the Bible, and seeking the counsel of other believers. The verse says, A man's steps are from the Lord. How then can man understand his way? This proverb speaks to the idea that, as humans, we are limited in our understanding and cannot comprehend the full scope of our lives and the events that take place within them. It reminds us that our plans and goals may not reflect the path that God has in store for us and that we must trust in Him to direct our steps. There may be times that we feel fear of what awaits us in the future. Like we're asking, can I still get married? Or can I still have the business I dream of? And so on. But dear, our future is not in our hands. God is sovereign. All we have to do is to trust Him. We cannot force God. We are not in control of our lives, but God is. We often think we know what's best for us, but in reality, we have a very limited perspective. We can't see the future or know all the factors that are at play in our lives. This is why it's important to trust in God's guidance, even when we don't understand everything that's happening. We can have faith that God is working all things together for our good, even if we can't see it at the moment. Are you seeking great things for yourself? instead of seeking to be a great person? God wants you to be in a much closer relationship with Himself than simply receiving His gifts. He wants you to get to know Him. Even some large thing we want is only incidental. It comes and it goes. But God never gives us anything incidental. There is nothing easier than getting into the right relationship with God. Unless it is not God you seek, but only what He can give you. If you have only come as far as asking God for things, you have never come to the point of understanding the least bit of what surrender really means. You have become a Christian based on your own terms. You protest, saying, I asked God for the Holy Spirit, but He didn't give me the rest and the peace I expected. And instantly God puts His finger on the reason you are not seeking the Lord at all. You are seeking something for yourself. Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Matthew 7, 7 Ask God for what you want, and do not be concerned about asking for the wrong thing, because as you draw ever closer to Him, you will cease asking for things altogether. Your Father knows the things you need before you ask Him. Matthew 6, 8 then why should you ask? So that you may get to know Him. Are you seeking great things for yourself? Have you said, O oh Lord, completely fill me with your Holy Spirit? 
If God does not, it is because you are not totally surrendered to Him. There is something you still refuse to do. Are you prepared to ask yourself what it is you want from God and why you want it? God always ignores your present level of completeness in favor of your ultimate future completeness. He is not concerned about making you blessed and happy right now, but He's con working out His ultimate perfection for you, that they may be one just as we are one. John 17, 22. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Timothy 3, 1 ESV. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Leadership in the church should not be pursued out of selfish ambition, but rather from a sincere desire to serve God's people. Those who desire taking on leadership responsibilities in the church must recognize the honor and weightiness of the role and approach it with a heart to serve sacrificially. Paul emphasizes that overseers must lead lives above reproach, exhibiting moral excellence and unblemished character. They should be faithful in their relationships, demonstrating devotion to their spouse and managing their household effectively. As the following verses say, Therefore an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, with all dignity keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. 1 Timothy 3 2, 7. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. John 2.15 ESV Do not love the world. The Bible tells us to not love the world because it's not how we believers behave since we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit and it cannot give glory to God. And if we do, it shows that we don't have the love of the Father. It shows that we are not His children because if we are, he will never allow us to love worldly things. And so we are always chastened. 1 John 2, 15, 17, ESV states, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride in possessions, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. This passage highlights the distinction between the love for worldly things and the love for God. It warns against being consumed by desires of the flesh, material possessions, seeking constant self-gratification, and the pursuit of worldly pleasures. This is because these things are transient and temporary, while a relationship with God is eternal. If any man loves the world, in this sense, a person loves the world, it shows that he has no true relationship with Jesus. If characteristically he loves the world as his portion and lives for that, if it is the ruling principle of his life to gain and enjoy that, it shows that his heart has never been renewed and that he has no part with the children. Whoever heeds instruction is on the path to life, but he who rejects reproof leads others astray. Proverbs 10.17 ESV He who rejects reproof leads others astray. 
The verse highlights the negative consequences of ignoring or rejecting reproof. When individuals disregard or reject guidance, they can lead themselves and others astray. This occurs when people allow pride, stubbornness, and the refusal to acknowledge their mistakes to cloud their judgment and hinder personal growth. We have to know that our actions affect ourselves but can impact those around us, especially if we profess we are Christians. People often look up to those they perceive as knowledgeable like church leaders. If someone in a position of influence or leadership disregards correction, it can send a message to others that it is acceptable to do the same. If we ignore corrections, we set a poor example for others to follow. This can lead others astray by perpetuating a cycle of ignorance, poor decision-making, and negative behavior. We have to be mindful especially of those people who are new in faith. We have to know that they are more susceptible to being led astray or influenced by incorrect teachings or misguided individuals. Due to their limited knowledge and experience, they may not have developed a strong foundation in biblical understanding or discernment. This vulnerability can make them more prone to following the wrong teachings or being swayed by false leaders. And he is the head of the body, the church. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6, ESV. This verse encourages parents to intentionally and diligently train up children in the ways of righteousness and God's truth. By doing so, there is a greater likelihood a child will continue to live those teachings as they mature. In this verse, the instruction is to train up a child. This implies intentional and deliberate teaching, disciplining, and guiding of a child's character and behavior, both instruction and a nurturing environment that reinforces godly values and principles. As parents, we naturally desire the best for our children and often focus on providing for their physical and material needs, such as comfort and security. However, it is equally important, if not more, spiritual needs. As parents, we have a tremendous influence on our children's spiritual development. Our dreams for them in this aspect can have a lasting impact, shaping their values, character, and eternal destiny. So, let us dream big for our children's spiritual well-being, realizing that their relationship with God's legacy, we can leave them. The verse highlights the significance of starting the journey of faith early, instilling godly values, and leading children towards a life that honors and follows God. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Colossians 1.18 ESV That in everything he might be preeminent. This verse is part of a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Colossae. In this particular verse, Paul is emphasizing the preeminence and supremacy of Jesus Christ. First, Paul states that Jesus is the head of the body, which refers to the church. This means that Jesus is the leader and authority over the church, guiding and directing it. Next, Paul describes Jesus as the beginning and the firstborn from the dead. This signifies that Jesus is the source and origin of all things, and also the first to be resurrected from the dead. His resurrection is significant because it demonstrates his power over death and his victory over sin. Finally, Paul concludes by stating that in everything, Jesus is preeminent. This means that Jesus holds the highest position and is superior in all things. He is above all other powers and authorities, and his name is to be exalted above all others. 
he is to be given the utmost honor and reverence in every aspect of our existence and every area of our lives. This implies that our thoughts, actions, decisions, and priorities should be influenced and guided by the supremacy of Christ. All our actions should be aligned with His teachings, and we should prioritize our relationship with Him, following His example of love, humility, and grace, and striving to live our lives in a way that brings glory to Him. Please subscribe our YouTube channel to reach 50,000 divine subscribers very soon. Please share this video to 10 people only if you love God Jesus and share super thanks. Type amen to affirm thanks for watching.